Let's talk about something really interesting for mobile technology. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to another SAP Code Talk. I'm really pleased to have Martin Grasshoff with me. Martin, thank you for joining me on Code Talk today. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So as you are a new person, and we really love new people at, at Code Talk, uh, just introduce yourself to the Code Talk audience, please. Yeah, Martin Grasshoff is my name, and I'm working as a product manager for the SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Services. And within our team, we're responsible for the product itself, uh, for all the related activities around the product, obviously um, development of the product, but also rollout. And that's why I'm here. I want to tell you a little bit about the new stuff that we recently introduced. Excellent. So this new stuff that you recently introduced is something that I've been really, I sort of found out about this um, uh, in a, a pre-engineering meeting once when it, it was under the name of Escape Velocity, which is fantastic. We love we love code names. And it's now the, the mobile backend tools. Uh, and as I say, I'm really interested in it. So could you tell us what it's all about? Yeah, the mobile backend tools is uh, a set of um, developer related uh, tools, <laughs> hence the name. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we uh, from a mobile perspective, you know, when, when, when it comes to mobile app development, we always claim that, that you need to have a no data enabled backend, right? So um, you can do on the front end whatever you do, but if you want to get business data, it should be your data. Uh, that's not 100% true because our SDKs also work directly with uh, REST-based services without a particular or data implementation. Um, but it makes it easier for us, as well as it's a mandatory thing for uh, having offline synchronization, right? Because we need some of the OData protocol to understand the data that we need to synchronize. Anyhow, our customers and developers are always wondering where to get the OData service from. And in order to help them in, in the area, mostly of the, in the green field, where you start a mobile application from scratch, we wanted to introduce an OData service or make it easy to create OData services. And what we came up with is the mobile backend tools. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's great. That's exactly where I think where I'm getting the excitement from, because, you know, yeah. when I talk to people about these, it's for me, the SDK for iOS. Uh, and, they, and sometimes it's a case of, okay, let's like give them a, 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 an OData backend. And I'm sure we'll allude to this a little bit more in the code talk or, or, or some code talks coming up. But I want to mention, obviously, um, and this may, may be a really silly question, but we already have things like Gateway. Why another OData tool set? Uh, we even have many other uh, OData, let's say, producers. Uh, in, this, in SAP and also outside SAP. So we have uh, HANA XS and XSO data, mm -hmm. right? We have obviously the gateway, uh, but there's also uh, Apache or Lingo. And we decided to create something again um, because all those tools except the gateway are usually lacking mobile specific features of the OData protocol. Okay. Because nobody is really looking or paying attention to those little details. Um, and namely, the details are uh, repeatable requests, which is not necessarily OData, but HTTP, uh, but uh, Delta token and Delta that we need for Delta synchronization. And uh, server-sided pagination for uh, and, and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So wherever we looked at, except the SAP gateway, uh, we found gaps in, in the current offerings. And um, in addition, Apache Lingo was quite complicated and very low level. So it was real hardcore development stuff. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to lift it up a little bit and make sure that, that you can easily start with your data service. So, so it's basically the mobile um, backend tools is simplifying OData service generation as well as um, providing the, the mobile qualities that, that we need. 
Okay, that's pretty good. I mean, I'm, I, I know. I'm obviously, I'm a little bit ahead of the the audience as what is now, and and I'm I'm I come from the back the the old days of sort of rad development. So me as a as a developer would you know I I would like to be able to do this stuff really quickly, and and you guys have done this. So just to actually elaborate on probably what I've just said, where are the use cases, and where could I really use this? Mm. So, um. First of all, it's important to understand that whenever you have an SAP backend and you want to expose all data, you should stick to SAP Gateway. Okay. But if you create a mobile solution or maybe also a multi-channel application, then you, you um, often have no backend at all. And if that's the case, the mobile backend tools and the generated services that, that these tools spit out <laughs> um, is, is the use case. There are other use cases, for instance, um, mock service generation, right? If you want to have a running full-fledged, fully implemented OData service uh, from scratch, just in a couple of minutes, you can click and point it using the mobile backend tools and have a mock service for development. This decouples the backend developers and the front-end developers, and the front-end developer can already start once you have a um, agreed service interface right so that's another use case okay um I mean, again I, i'm thinking again of of the scenario where i've come from sort of explaining the sdk for ios uh, specifically and it could be the sdk for android as well uh, to, to folks um is is it meant uh, or can it be used for uh, that sort of initial testing or that initial um um sort of uh, not so not, not so much initial use case but you know sort of producing proof of concepts that's the word i was searching for yeah definitely it's very easy so I'll just walk you through the the process of creating such a service right so you start in the web ide and in the web ide we have this mobile uh, development tools extension plugin uh, that you can enable once you do that you can create a new service project and in that service project, you create a CSDL file. A CSDL file is basically the metadata, the description of the service itself. Um, you do so by the means of a graphical editor. So you don't need to understand and know everything about CSDL. It's quite complex, I uh, must say. That's the, that's the red side that I was alluding to. <laughs> I like that. Ex <laughs> exactly. Basically, it's, it's no code development. Right. So you get a full old data service that is tied to a, back to the process. So you create your model, right? And it's a graphical editor that lets you do, and it's very similar to entity relationship modeling. So you have your objects, you create links between those objects, add the properties, the properties of type string, very straightforward. Once you have your model, you right click and generate a Java project based on that model. And that Java project, is basically fulfilling a lot of uh, magic in, in the back end, background. Um, first, it exposes your model that you have designed byte by byte to, to the, as an OData service. And on the other hand, it taps into a database, it creates the necessary tables um, to expose you and store your data. And it's a Java project. So what you need to do next is you compile it. And that can be done directly from the web IDE. And once you have it, have compiled it, you get a WAR file or an MTAR file that you can directly de deploy to either Cloud Foundry or your Neo landscape, right? And with that, your application is having a backend system. Excellent. And um, I'm going to say there, uh, Martin, that, you know, you have a really great blog about this. You've uh, you, you you have a use case of uh, a canteen menu. So and, and yes. that's really great. So, guys, check out uh, Google Martin Grassoff and uh, his blog on on this. So and you can sort of actually go through the steps. And that's what I did. And that's what also got me really excited. When I get back to the idea, Martin, of uh, the back end tools itself and the context of mo mobile. So what's the meaning there? Um, well, we want to, to make uh, app development faster. So at the end with, with that backend tools, you get a 
end-to-end low-code or no-code development tool chain, right? You can start in the backend with the mobile backend tools. Then on top of the service, you can use an MDK application or you can add an MDK application directly on top of it. But you can also add then the mobile cards or even a native application on top of that service. And MDK is local tool set, right? You can create a complete CRUD based application with nice looking forms uh, without any coding, just declarative and deploy to a mobile device natively in the sense that, that each button and, and, and each view is a native, native view. So with the backend tools, I think we have a complete mobile RAT tool, rapid application development tool chain. And I'm very happy to see that. And it, it looks beautiful if you use it. Excellent. Well, I'm glad actually you you sort of brought all, all that other mobile technology in because I keep on alluding back to iOS, which is where you know, which is my my real sort of passion. And obviously, you know, you mentioned native, so iOS, Android, and MDK, and, and everything else. So thank you for for uh, correcting me, I guess, if anything. Uh, in Code Talk, you know, we don't like really to talk about you know future versions, but I've got to ask you, you know, I really sort of am admiring what you've created here. What's your plans for this going into the into the future? But you know, don't tie us down to versions and dates. Sure. As a product manager, I never tell dates. <laughs> so uh, what we want to do is we want to extend this feature. Um, right now, it just works with empty databases, right? So no structures, no tables in there. And what we want to do is we want to have a two-step approach. In the first step, we want to um, put on top of existing databases. So if you already have a database, then you can use that on top and expose your database as OData. So then we want to use that use case and extend it a little bit and add OData Delta information. First, you need um, Delta tracking right in the database and then expose it as Delta tokens. We want to add that to existing databases. It's a huge step, and it will certainly involve some changes uh, on the table structure itself. And we will not do that automatically. We always give it back to the admin. And um, and this is, I think, a very nice idea. We also want to to make to look into making the database part of a let's say staging database so that you can offload your backend into that database that you have in the cloud and serve the, the mobile aspects from there, right? This is typically used in B2C applications because the, the consumer user should not directly interact with the backend. So you typically copy back and forth uh, your data. That's the rough roadmap. Excellent. Well, as I say, this is this was the high level, and I'm sure we'll have you back, Martin. I'd like to sort of offer that to you and see you again on Code Talk. But thank you for joining me today. It was a pleasure. Thank you.